He's going to come out here and drop some knowledge. What? So please, round of applause for Pavel. I get a hug. Yes, I do. See, this is what happens when you talk about hugging. So uh, keeping, keeping in line with the pop theme, Enrique, my talk is titled Britney Spears Said It Best. You drive me crazy. Now admittedly, there's nothing about this talk in reference to our pop star Britney and everything to do with our brain. Let me start with a quick story. One day, there lived a salt merchant, and he would place these large sacks of salt upon the donkey in preparation for their trek to get to the nearby town to sell that salt. As they're walking, the donkey spots a pond, and by accident, by great misfortune, tumbles in, and surprisingly, half of the yield, some of that salt actually vanishes. The donkey stands up, the donkey feels relieved, and thinks, huh, there's something here. So they're in, they're out. Every time they would make that journey, every time they would make that trek, the donkey would fall in to the pond to relieve himself of the weight. However, the salt merchant would lose some of the money. So one day he decided to actually strap on the donkey cotton, a bag of cotton. The donkey crosses the pond, the donkey falls in. As opposed to feeling relieved, the cotton swells, the donkey stands up and still has to make the journey. This is kind of a quick little tale about my good friend OCD. These writhing, painful obsessions, these twirling thoughts that subsume my mind, yield me to do particular behaviors to seek relief, and inevitably, falling into that pond, I end up with cotton. It becomes heavier. You know, my first recollection of OCD was when I was about 13 years old. I was face to face with the sink, with the bathroom mirror, and I washed my hands for about 45 minutes until they began to crack and bleed. Uh, I was baptized Eastern Orthodox, and for most of my teenage and childhood life, I would pray every single night. And on a perfect day, the prayer would last about 10 or so minutes, but if I would have a bad or an immoral thought that would come to me, I felt that God himself would come down, condemn me, and I would feel the wrath of lightning in all its glory. And it was not a pretty healthy relationship with that. OCD has also kind of re in many different parts of my life. Notably, I remember coming out of the bathroom and, and seeing my mom when I was panicked. And I was like, Mom. She's like, what? And I was like, Mom, how do you know? How do you know that, that when you're done wiping, you're actually done? And she looked at me and she's like, well, when there's no more red. And I was like, what, what do you mean? And from my end, that, that felt like a very logical question to ask because I was in a flurry, I was in a panic, I did not know what the right answer was, and to seek an authority figure made, made sense. Uh, OCD has also wreaked some havoc in my, in my intimate relationships. Multiple relationships broken, thankfully so, uh, but I, I would concoct these narratives, connect the dots that never existed. And inevitably, it will amount to me sitting down with my significant partner and having this compulsion to confess to be honest, and I would always feel euphoric after the honesty, and yet my partner would be the punching bag, and this has lasted many, many times. I think often those people who have a mental illness, we, we yearn, we crave for normality, we wish to be normal, we wish for things to be as they were, and I have something to share with you guys, because in, frankly, normal sucks. That very same... <laughs> That, that very same normal that we yearn for are those decisions, are those minute steps that you took to get you to a place that wreaks havoc and causes pain. Wanting to get to normal and not end up with a mental illness is like living in Colorado. Living in Colorado, inevitably you will have a golden retriever, you will walk in the park and you'll have yoga pants on. <laughs> Wanting to get back to normal and not end up with a mental illness is like setting your alarm clock in the wee hours of the morning, peeking your eyelid, you see it goes off and you slam down on the snooze because you are not going to get up. It is inevitable. Wanting to get back to normal and not end up with a mental illness is like listening to Lou Bega's Mamba Number no. 5. Maybe there's some fans in the crowd. It's inevitable when you listen to that song, you just have to jump up and down and move it all around. I mean, the, the tunes will buzz through your system. If I kind of take on, tack on our modern philosopher here, Alan Iverson, we're talking about practice. 
For so many years and for so many days, we have practiced things that have been unhealthy. They have gotten us to a place of brokenness. And frankly, perhaps not wanting to get back to normal, we can lay claim to something new and plant our flag in the ground and say, I can be healthier, practice new things. And thankfully in Colorado, we are equipped and blessed to have many resources out there. Thank you.